Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the rich fool. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they love the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. In last week's parable, The Good Samaritan, we listened to Jesus turn a question from a lawyer about how to inherit eternal life into an opportunity to share a powerful parable about loving our neighbors. Through this parable, Jesus redefined the religious idea that neighbors are people who look like us and think like us. Jesus pointed out that neighbors include people we might not naturally like, even our enemies. The lawyer asked, who is my neighbor? After Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan, the lawyer was forced to ask a much deeper question. What kind of neighbor am I? That is a question for all of us to ask. At the end, Jesus challenged the lawyer's question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He turned that question around into a clearer understanding of salvation. It's not about what we can do to inherit salvation. It is recognizing what Jesus did so that we can receive salvation as a free gift. The parable ended with Jesus inviting to love strangers the same way the Good Samaritan did. Luke chapter 12 begins by saying, Thousands of people gathered. And while surrounded by this large crowd, Jesus taught on a variety of subjects, including trusting God for our financial needs. He used a couple of his favorite expressions. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten by God. Why, even the hair on your head are all numbered. Fear not, you of more value than many sparrows. Luke chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. It is interesting that right after saying that, someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to invite to divide the inheritance with me. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. What a revealing question. There must have been significant family tension behind that question. Jesus wisely responded to the man by asking him, Who made me a judge or an arbiter over you? Luke chapter 12, verse 14. It's worth noting that you in the Greek text is in the plural form. That indicates that it's most likely that the man's brother was with him in the crowd listening to Jesus. When Jesus spoke, he was talking to the man who asked for help and his brother who appeared to be unwilling to share his inheritance. We can also say that what Jesus said to the two brothers applies to all of us who hear this parable today. Jesus helped both brothers by sharing two very important principles about the kingdom of God. First, he said, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Coveting is the desire to have what others have. The warning against coveting is the 10th commandment. It covers anything that is not covered in the other commandments that are harmful to our relationship with God, our family, or our community. Wanting what others have leads people to commit the sins of the other commandments. The second principle of the kingdom of God that Jesus stated is one's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions, Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Here's the way the Passion Translation 
words what Jesus said. Your life can never be measured by the amount of things that you possess. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. What great advice this is. I pray that God gives you the heart to hear and believe what Jesus said. What we own in this world is not a measure of the success we will enjoy in the next world. Immediately after sharing these important principles, Jesus told the parable that we are studying today. He said, a land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. He said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all of my grains and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, and eat and drink and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things which you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21. What does Jesus want us to learn from this parable? Clearly, Jesus wants us to value the importance of having a rich relationship with God. The good news is that everyone has access to having a rich relationship with God. A rich relationship with God is available to all who will take the time to listen to his voice, read his word, and open our heart to his will and his ways. In chapter 12, Jesus has more to say about how to be rich toward God. For example, Jesus said, consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither spin nor toil. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Luke chapter 12, verse 27. It is a beautiful thing to see puppies in a variety of colors growing in the wild fields on the side of the mountains and the fields of the Middle East. God cares for you, and as much as he cares for these beautiful flowers, it's a measure of how much he cares for you and me. Or consider this verse. For all of the nations of the world seek these things, that is, financial things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Luke chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. God does want to bless us, but when he raises our standard of living, he expects us to raise our standard of giving. Someone said, treasures are laid up in heaven when we lay down our treasures on the earth. Jesus went on to say, sell your possessions, give to the needy, Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. We can see in the parable that the rich man's plan began with himself. He said, I shall, I will tear down, I will store, I will say to myself, He was self-focused by saying, my crops, my barn, my grain, and my soul. Jesus went on to teach people how to invest in the best bank. Bishop Ambrose of Milan said, the bosoms of the poor, the houses of the widows, the mouths of the children are the barns which will last forever. Recently, a man called me saying he remembered that a long time ago, I showed him pictures of children in an orphanage in Africa. He said, I'd like to bring you a gift to send to those young boys that you showed to me. 
So here are some ways that we can learn to be rich towards God. Tithe your personal resources. The Bible recommends giving 10% of our income to the Lord. When we do that, we open a window for God to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Make a plan to tithe your future resources. People who wait until they have more money before they begin to tithe lack the faith to follow through when they receive much. If you tithe on the little you have right now, you'll have the faith to tithe when your resources are larger. Include the kingdom of God in your will. It's a good feeling to know that what God has blessed us with while we are, are alive can keep blessing people after we are already in heaven. Jesus said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give the kingdom to you. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Over the years, I've had the privilege of, of consulting with people who want to leave a financial legacy after they are gone. Many great charitable organizations continue the ministry of people who have been in heaven for many years because they left a gift for the good of others. If God blessed you with great wealth and you've not established a plan to continue spreading the message of Jesus, please write to me and I can help you connect with information on how to leave a spiritual legacy. My wife was raised on a farm and she remembers her parents asking the Lord to send rain for their crops and to protect the harvest until it could be brought in safely. Her dad was very different than the man in this story. Perhaps as you have listened to the message, you've realized that you're a lot like the rich man in the parable Jesus told. You're living and planning like your life will go on forever. If you knew your life would come to an end today, are you ready to meet Jesus? If you're not ready to meet Jesus, why delay another minute? Receive Jesus as your Savior. Accept what he did for you on the cross. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and give you the gift of eternal life. If you just prayed with me to receive Jesus as your Savior, write to me and I'll send you more information on the blessing of following Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.